All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Hopefully, that's some good vibes for your Thursday morning still. Um, I'm really excited to, to welcome so many of you onto the webinar today. Um, let's get straight into it. All right. Awesome. Hi, everyone. So my name is Aditi. I'm an associate product manager at Checkbox and the feature lead for the feature that we're discussing today, redlining. Um, yeah, it's really exciting to have so many of you here. And just to get to know the audience a little bit as, as we go, um, what I might do is start off with a quick poll. So you should see something pop up on your screen in a second. If you could please answer that, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes to, to get started. All right, we'll do, um, we'll give it maybe 30 more seconds. Um, I can see some answers rolling in, which is fantastic. Okay, all right, let's wrap it up there. So um, the vast majority of you have said that you don't have CLM or contract lifecycle management tools, and you don't know much about it. Um, so very much at the beginning of your automation journey, which is really exciting, um, we'll hopefully do our best to go through what that all means um, and what it will look like on Checkbox. Um, we have a few of you here as well who do have CLM, so that's really interesting, but they don't handle on-platform redlining. So hopefully that'll give a bit of a different, uh, today's webinar, I'll give you a little bit of a different take on um, what's possible in the space of contract and, and document management. All right, so let's, without further ado, let's get into the heart of it. I do want to acknowledge that today we have both a mix of existing customers, so hi, friends of Checkbox, and um, also prospects on the, the webinar as well. So hello to um, potential future friends of Checkbox as well. It's really exciting to have you. Um, but just to make sure everyone's on the same page, I'll do a little bit of an intro to Checkbox before we get into the process. Um, a little bit of admin as well before we get into things. You should see a Q&A option on your, um, in your Zoom controls. Please feel free to use that at any point in time to ask questions. I'll be monitoring that regularly and then um, answering your questions either as we go towards the end. So um, as a live audience, you have a unique amount of power today over um, the people who are watching online to really shape the discussion um, and shape what we talk about during the session. So please, um, all types of questions, any thoughts that come to mind, please chuck them straight into the uh, Q&A chat. All right, so let's get to that introduction of Checkbox that we were talking about. In a nutshell, um, Checkbox is a no-code automation platform. Basically, we make it easy for um, your everyday business person to build apps without needing um, complex development time or needing to know how to write code. So what you're seeing on screen there is our drag and drop studio, which is kind of the heart of the checkbox platform. So instead of yeah having to write lines of code, you can drag and drop different blocks together uh, to map out your process and then automate it and make it really easy um, for end users to, to run through whatever process it is. Um, and just to put that in a little bit more tangible terms, uh, well, I like to frame checkbox as kind of four key capabilities like this. So firstly, um, we have our triage and self-assessment side of things. So that's input, capturing information from the business, um, from other people uh, in standardized format. So you're not wasting that time going back and forth, asking um, for basic details, which should have come through in that first email. Then we have workflow approvals. So um, getting sign off and signature or approvals from the right people in the organization and making it really easy for them to give that yes or give that feedback um, throughout the process. Uh, thirdly, we have document generation. Um, I won't touch on this too much because that's going to be the heart of our discussion. And then finally, reporting as well. So these are kind of the four key categories that Checkbox works in or the four key capabilities that Checkbox has. There's much, much more, of course, but at the heart of it is, is these four things and how they link together. Um, of course, we've got 
today's focus being around the document generation aspect side of things, because um, that's where the heart of redlining sits. So let's go on a little bit of a journey looking at the document automation process as a whole, and then we'll jump into where redlining fits into that demonstration. So I like to think of document automation as coming in three key pieces. Um, and of course, documents have been around since, you know, the, the start of time. And um, they've gone through various stages uh, of, of automation and modernization through business processes. So what we always start with, of course, is document generation, creating that first version of a document um, that sort of starts um, any, any process. So your NDAs, your MSAs, and of course, not just in the legal space, um, we have employment contracts and letters for, for HR. Um, and this has obviously gone through a significant amount of modernization, right? What you see on the left-hand side is what um, a lot of teams either had or still have, which is kind of a word template that's got markup saying, you know, remove this option, remove that option, and people manually going through the process of checking documents, finding the right clauses, um, inserting and deleting them to a process where you can capture the, the key information on a nice, neat form interface, which is convenient for everybody, um, and then automatically use that to drive which clauses get included um, and put information like names and things like that in the correct location of a document. So that's document generation, creating that first version in a nutshell. We then have our um, approval and sign off process. So it used to look like what's on our left again, um, emails, perhaps forgetting to attach the correct document and, and going back and forth that way, creating a lot of inbox noise for busy stakeholders who, um, who you know, have lots of, who have heaps of BAU on their plate. So, um, it, and that would, of course, cause a lot of delays in, in getting approvals. You might have to go back and forth a few times just to get that right information out. Um, two, again, the experience on the right-hand side being um, one one-click sort of platform approval um, in, in the same system that generated the document in this particular case. So keeping it all in, in one location rather than splitting out across Word and email. And then the final stage we have is the document execution and signature. So um, of course, this involves either wet signature, signing pen and paper, um, as, as it used to be and sometimes still is for highly sensitive documents, um, or increasingly now uh, e-signature. So things like DocuSign um, coming from, again, the same platform that did the previous steps. So that's automation at a high level um, of, of the document. And this in itself saves a lot of time, right? Where instead of going back and forth and, and wasting time between different stakeholders, um, everything centralized in one platform, it's nice and easy, and users are brought into the process with the relevant context whenever they need to be, rather than being looped in on massive email chains um, throughout the entire process. But this is also the happy path of the process. This is when everything goes smoothly from uh, approval workflows where everyone approves and signs off, the, the parties involved are happy to sign as well. Um, and unfortunately, that's not always the case. Um, and what ends up happening then is, is where things get messy, basically, which is negotiation. So when we get to, once we've generated the first version of the document and we start going through that approval process, um, it's natural that people might not be on the same page. And that's where you get this kind of interweb of um, word and email and versions flying back and forth and redlining and track changes, um, which, you know, people store across different systems um, and yeah, end up with a lot of messy back and forth between each of the, the stakeholders. So the challenges around these are like the are quite well noted in terms of parties spend, you know, hours looking for the correct contract version or reversing changes because the incorrect contract version was used. Um, there's a lack of visibility for, for non-negotiating stakeholders. So if I'm, for example, the procurement manager, I might not be directly responsible for the negotiations between legal and the counterparty, but because I've got my own deadlines, I need to know when the supplier agreement is going to close, when is when is my supplier going to be bought on board? And unless I'm CC'd in on the entire email chain, um, getting heaps of noise with things that aren't relevant to me, I have no idea what's going on in this particular process unless I ask someone, which again, takes more time out of their day to respond to my query. 
And then finally, there's a lack of an audit trail as well. So um, compliance being really important um, for an, from an organizational standpoint, understanding who's made the decisions, what did that negotiation process look like? Why did we decide to include this clause and exclude that clause? Um, and if users aren't saving versions correctly, and often versions are floating around on local drives and SharePoint and, um, and uh, Google Docs as well, if those versions aren't stored and saved correctly, then you lose that piece of context about why did this happen in the first place. And if that lives even worse in the email chains of individuals, that context might disappear once that individual moves on from the organization. But unlike the other areas of document negotiation or document automation, sorry, which have seen modernization um, into, into platforms, this is the kind of area that hasn't really seen a lot of progress. So we're still working quite heavily in, um, in Word and email, and that's been kind of the de facto process for a while now. Um, I might just grab this. Cool. Awesome. So with that, today's webinar is all about um, modernizing negotiation. So what does this look like in the future? Um, and that's what we're hoping to give you a little bit of a taste of today with Checkbox's new redlining feature. So let's jump straight into Checkbox. Um, what we're looking at right now is a document execution app. So this app, um, which a lot of our customers already use, is, um, is basically designed to help individuals in the organization navigate the maze of signature hierarchy. So um, there can be several steps to getting a document signed and executed in your organization. Um, and often it's really hard to know who is the correct stakeholder. So in this app, we'll allow the user to upload the, the agreement that they need to negotiate. Um, and then we'll automatically tell them who needs to approve based on other information they input. And then we'll guide them through that approval and negotiation process. Let's get started. Um, so jumping in, this is Checkbox's classic form interface. So picking on Westpac today, but what we're doing here is fetching a list from the Australian Business Register of all the entities listed under the name Westpac. So I'll pick on one of the New South Wales ones. Um, and then we're automatically returning other information. So this is a live, live integration, but we're automatically integrating um, and returning their full name, their ABN, their state of registration and so on. Um, let's select our department and the type of agreement that we're doing. Um, let's say we don't have another payment involved. Um, if yes, um, then we would go to a finance approval as well. And there's that kind of dynamic decision tree happening in checkbox um, based on your answers that you're giving. But let's say no for now. Brief description, um, new lease on Tech Hub, for example. And we'll upload our latest up-to-date agreement. So I'm just going to grab this document here um, and we'll continue on once that loads. Perfect. Cool. So if you've used Checkbox at all, so for our existing customers, this is what would have been the old experience, right? The document's been, um, the document that you've uploaded, you can now see here and, and double check it. But if you needed to make any markup, you'd have to download it, take it offline into Microsoft Word, and then perhaps upload it back into Checkbox. And obviously that takes you off the platform into a new system. That's a couple of clunky extra steps to jump out of Checkbox and then come back in. And so what we've really wanted to do is modernize and bring this experience inside of the checkbox platform itself into our new redlining um, module. So while that's loading, this is kind of the core hub for redlining. Um, what you can see on the right hand side here is a word like editor, which is automatically rendered our document for us. And then on the left hand side, we've got kind of our information hub. So we've got customizable instructions by the author. You can see it's recognizing who I am as well and who the counterparty is automatically. Um, and these, these instructions can of course be customized by our author to indicate whatever um, key context you need to, to your user. And my document is already ready in markup mode. So let's say for example, I think that um, this particular definition, um, let's say the Corporations Act definition is superfluous here. We don't need it. Um, I can remove that, track changes are already going and it recognizes who I am. And maybe for the sake of the legal team, I can leave a quick comment um, here to say, um, I think this definition is superfluous. Let's get, let's get rid of it. 
Awesome. Cool. Um, just taking a quick pause to uh, recognize a question. Will we get a recording of this session after it? Yes, you will. So um, that's all good. Um, but yes, continuing with the demo briefly. So making changes is as simple as that. And you have access to kind of your main word functionality. So if there's any formatting that needs to be fixed, um, inserting images and other things, adjusting layouts, that's all there for you. Um, additionally, if this document had been modified before, so it came to you with red lines, um, those red lines would also be recognized already, um, or that red lining would also be recognized. So I'm happy with my agreement as is. I'm gonna hit finish review. It then asked me to save my version. So I'm going to say, yep, I'd like to save a version. I'm going to call it V2. Um, and of course, you can put whatever naming convention your organization follows here. I can provide a description. Uh, I can provide a description as well. Sorry, let me make the demo a little bit larger. Perfect. Hopefully that's a bit better. Um, yep, so I can provide a description of um, what's changed as well. So um, removing corp. Act definition. And then I can save this document version. And it's it's really as simple as that. So I've stayed completely on platform and made my changes. Then as a business user, I'm told um, what my next steps are in terms of approval. So I can see legal's got to sign off on it. The head of legal's also got to sign off on it as well. Um, and then our head of legal will be the final signatory too. Awesome, so let's continue through. Um, I'm now going to change hats. So I'm gonna go from the business user view to the legal team view. So in the background, what's happening here is the business user would get a notification that says, thanks, you're done with the process. Legal would also get a notification saying, um, hey, what, uh, legal would also get a notification saying, hey, you've got a new matter to review. And they'd be able to come into checkbox and land on this screen here. So I'm um, just zooming in on the document too. Uh, you can already see we're displaying the latest version. So legal's not fumbling around looking for the right version. V2 is already here. Um, I can quickly use this review panel to see exactly where we've had modifications made. So we've got our corporations at um, change here. We've seen our comment as well from the user saying that the definition is superfluous and we can quickly accept all of these changes as well. So let's get rid of that. And it's as simple as that. So we've cleaned up our Corporations Act definition. Let's resolve this comment as well. And then from the legal perspective, if I wanted to see a before and after, or if we'd gone through several rounds of negotiation, um, I could also use this document history tab here to see what had happened previously. So we can see this is a draft version that I'm modifying right now. Um, it's a copy of the last version that we worked on. And um, I could go back and have a look at that in read only mode, as well as the very first version that's been generated. So everything's right here for me. Um, and we can see it all in one go, basically, in this document history. Awesome. Um, this is probably a timely point to answer a question we've got from Jason. Um, can external parties make changes, red lines, that come back to the owner for approval? Um, the answer is they absolutely can. So if you have users outside of checkbox, um, basically just like you would with DocuSign, they'll get a link uh, in an email to say, hey, you need to review this document. They'll click on that link, come into checkbox, and they'll get to see this exact same interface. So um, internal users will be asked to log in, of course, to their checkbox account. So if you want to keep things inside your organization, but external users, if you'd like to send it to them, that's absolutely doable. Um, and they'll be able to see um, all the red lines that you've made and um, make their own markups and send it back to the, the user. Um, another question we've got is, is there a limit of versions possible? Um, also, if the third party sends you back a new version, how do you send that, uh, how do you save that back into the platform? So in terms of limits of versions possible, no, there's no limit. So you can go back and forth through the cycle as, as many times as you need to. Um, if the third parties send you a new version, how do you save that back into the platform? Um, in essence, either they could make this markup directly on platform, just like we're doing here, so they can do all the same steps that we're looking at. Um, or if they like email you a version or something similar, we have another option, which I've switched off for now, but it's called markup offline, where you can upload a document that's been edited offline already. So if for some reason you have parties involved who aren't comfortable using um, the editor or you know have their own preferences, they could absolutely take the, the latest version into Word, make their modifications and then upload that new version back into Checkbox and we'll treat it just like it was a version created in Checkbox. 
Awesome. All right, let's continue through um, the process. So let's save this again as V3. We'll say we've accepted all changes. Save new version. All right, and checkbox is automatically determined that I've created a new version. So I can see that I've, I've added a new version and it's asking me as a legal team how I'd like to proceed with this matter. So from here, I might actually open up a new poll and let the audience choose their own adventure here. Um, I'm going to launch um, this poll. So which of these options would you like to pick? Do you want to see some more redlining? Um, do we want to go through another round of negotiations or are you happy to move on to the next approvals from here? All right, cool. So majority opinion says, um, majority opinion says, let's move on to the next stage. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and do that then. Let's head onwards to the new approver and continue through. So we're going to submit it to our new approver. Our last approver in this case is our legal team. So uh, the legal team get, well, sorry, not the legal team, our um, CEO in this case, or our head of legal, um, who's going to sign off on this particular matter. Um, so the head of legal receives an email that looks like this. You've been assigned the following document. Um, we've got all the, the, the relevant version again right in the body, um, any key context as well. So the, the legal team can make their decision all in one go um, and they can actually approve or reject directly from their email. So once they've, once they've made that approval or rejection, it would confirm through, but we're going to stick to this process. And we come back to our business user to say, hey, your work has now been approved. So um, it's as simple as that in terms of uh, quick and easy approvals. And we're gonna progress through to the last stage. We're finally ready to execute our document. So let's see if Westpac has agreed to use digital signature. Let's say, yes, they're happy to do that. Um, we can add their name and email, and we can automatically trigger a DocuSign integration to get this document signed as a last step of our process. Cool. So I should receive a, um, a DocuSign email shortly, um, which would allow me to uh, basically sign off on the document. Here we go. Oh, it's in my inbox. Perfect. So I would then be able to proceed through the regular DocuSign experience and, and sign the document. Awesome. So, and that's that, that marks the end of the document execution app. So this is just one example of how you can use um, redlining on the Checkbox platform. Um, of course, you can generate the document that you're going to redline inside of Checkbox before the markup process as well. So really handy for cases um, where you're doing things on your own paper. Um, and yeah, and there's heaps of flexibility in, in that view as well. Um, I'm going to just move my controls briefly. Let's jump here. Um, from the project teams side of things, um, there is of course comprehensive analytics around all the information that we've got as well. So um, we can set up custom dashboards to track that, um, we can set up custom dashboards to track what tasks are in progress, um, what tasks are completed and have that full document repository, which is then searchable as well. So if I was looking for all the agreements by Westpac, for example, I can find them here and I can review um, the, the full document history as well through the project team. So this is where we can capture our audit trail um, and have a look at all the different versions that have occurred as well. So that's all standardized in checkbox, as well as, of course, create complex analytics off the back of it, too. So if we look at our analytics dashboard. Um, we can see kind we can automatically in real time see what workflows are at which stage of the process um, and trends as well over time. Um, and this is, of course, fully configurable. All right, I might take some time to head back into Q&A before we jump to one of the later sections. So um, the next question we've got from Daniel is, can you lock certain paragraphs to only allow an external user to amend areas? The answer is yes, just like Word, you can have content controls. So um, either you've set that up in the document before it's come into checkbox, or you could edit that on checkbox as well. But yes, it is possible to have content controls, um, just like Word. Uh, we've got a question from Murray. Can you have a variable in the file name to auto update the version number? Um, at this stage, that's not possible, um, but we've left that field fully flexible essentially because we know every organization has their own um, naming conventions for the documents. 
Um, we've got, can you have multiple reviewers redlining at the same time, i.e. a junior and senior lawyer working on the same document? Um, for control purposes at this point, the document's designed to move in a linear flow, so one person at a time ideally, but that's something that we uh, are definitely considering. It's just that from a version history and management perspective, uh, at this stage it makes more sense, um, particularly with the existing processes, to um, follow along linearly. Um, we've got, do DocuSign tags go in automatically or do you still need to add them manually? Um, you can automatically include them in the document that you generate. So a lot of our customers, um, the first version that they create, they um, include the DocuSign tags so that they're already in there and no one has to think uh, about them towards the end of the process. Um, let's have a look at some chat questions as well. just going through and finding um, the correct comments. Um, awesome. So we've got, um, can you have internal and external comments? Um, yes, in the sense that we actually facilitate um, internal and external versions. So let's say we've got three stakeholders, the business, the legal team, and our external counterparty. Um, the business and legal will give them the, we can give them the ability to mark certain versions as internal or external, um, and that restricts who's able to see them. So our counterparty won't be able to see any of the internal versions um, and they won't even know that they exist basically. So that's that's the versioning system. But of course, at the master level, all those different versions are automatically tracked um, and available. So if I'm a process administrator, I can see all of the, the information. Okay, more questions from the chat. Um, can you create can you create workflows based on specific document data? For example, change of address might not require scrutiny, whereas contract price may need to go um, to direct counsel. Yes, absolutely. So any of the variables that you saw um, on that first form um, can be used to kind of drive the logic. So if we modify any of those fields, we can then send the app down a different pathway. And you saw as well in that legal approval set um, that we uh, are able to kind of um, automatically detect that a new version has been created and then route the app down the correct pathway accordingly or give legal the choice as to where they want to go from here. And you could set that up for any, any of the stakeholders involved in the process. Um, loving all the questions, guys. Please keep them coming in. Um, to what extent can you configure execution workflows so that they correspond with the requirement for due execution by um, the respective parties? The answer to that is that it's fully customizable. So I can set up um, basically any sort of logic. And perhaps this is the best time to show what the back end of this feature looks like. So apologies, Zoom is obscuring my change of nav bars. But in essence, um, this is that drag and drop studio we were talking about in Checkbox. You can see I've got different pathways um, coming from different blocks depending on where we need to go. So for example, from legal, if we need to head back, um, we need to send it back to the other party for, for modifications, we can do that. Um, if we want to go on to finance review, we can head there um, and we can head in many different directions. The, the wet signature decision that we made, the, the wet versus um, online signature, can also route into different pathways. So this is fully customizable um, as, as an author, as an app author. You can put in whatever blocks in, in basically whatever sequence that you'd like. Um, and for our existing customers, it's very easy to transition from the view document setup that you have at the moment um, into the review document as well. So if we remember from the old app, what we're looking at is this view document view where um, you basically just configure a basic message and you display the document. All we've got to do is switch over into document review mode. Um, and then we can customize things like the instructions that we display, um, as well as customize things like whether we allow the user to mark up offline, um, whether we display that document history or not. So for some external parties, for example, you might not want them to interact with that history. You just want them to see the latest version. Um, that's also fine, whether we allow internal versions or not as well. So it's fully co configurable and it's quite easy to transition across as well. All right, um, looking for some more questions. Um, 
do we have an integration with DMS like NetDocs for uploading docs or do the docs need to be saved locally? So all the docs are saved in Checkbox automatically. And if um, if that suits, you can, of course, use Checkbox as that kind of repository type system where you've got that information stored. Um, otherwise, Checkbox has or can integrate with any system that basically has REST APIs. So um, we're expanding our library of native integrations every day. So we've got Zakia, LawView, um, DocuSign, Adobe Sign, and soon to come Salesforce as well. Um, and we're always exploring new integrations, but on a bespoke basis, um, we can integrate with basically any system that has open APIs. And I believe specifically for NetDocs, they actually have email integration as well. So we've had clients um, actually send emails across to NetDocs with a specific claim number or a specific ID, and then have documents automatically store. So it can be as simple as that, depending on your system. Awesome. Um, can the counterparty use the negotiation tool or is it just for internal approvals? Um, the answer to that is the counterparty can absolutely use the negotiation tool, just like DocuSign will send them an email, will prompt them as to uh, to enter their name and email as well so we know who they are and then they have free reigns um, or in the sense that they can use that editor um, exactly as we saw just then. All right. Um, how often does the system require maintenance? The answer is that really comes down to um, the is it really comes down to how often your process has changed. Honestly, um, if your process doesn't change at all, you can leave this tool exactly as it is and keep going um, through through the process. It doesn't require you know a yearly check or anything per se. But if your process has changed often, that's when you'll go through the process of modifying the app. Maybe you'll remove an approval, change an approver, um, add an extra step, whatever. It is that you're doing that's really a matter of you know dragging and dropping in the correct blocks and then publishing the version which is a, a one-click process to then update the workflow um do you offer assistance in creating these pathways so i'm assuming that question is asking about um designing the app itself um the answer is yes we do um we have a lovely customer success and delivery team who's there to offer advice we have training programs as well our certifications program um, lets you make changes as well. Uh, sorry, let's like shows you through the basic steps of, of using checkbox. And we have a fantastic partner network as well, who's happy to step in and assist with building applications. So there are heaps of different options there. Um, awesome. Uh, is this an uh, does does this have to be uh, does it have to be an approval after editing a doc? Are we able to send it directly for e-signature once changes are made? The answer is absolutely. You can send it straight on. Um, I've configured it so that it always goes for approval, just to sanity check. But let's say, for example, legal has full autonomy or HR has full autonomy to just modify the letter, modify the document, and then send it straight out. You can absolutely do that, um, and we can include an email notification as well to say back to the requester to say FYI we've made these changes here the latest version but it's already out for e-signature it's ready to go so um, that is fully customizable um, the redlining module is just another block just like all of our other blocks in in the process awesome um I think that is most of the questions. If I have missed your question by any chance, um, we will have a full read of these through post webinar and answer your questions directly by email as well. Um, but yes, please do keep them coming through. I will have a quick look if I've missed anything. Um, I think the last thing I want to talk about uh, as part of this process is if I go back to PowerPoint is um, a question we often get asked is, you know, how is this different to a document management system or a contract lifecycle management system? And to that, I answer um, documents are often a small part of a business process. So if we look at the process we've got on screen here, for example, which is a supplier onboarding or supply procurement process. Um, the only two steps that really involve the documents or, or um, circle focus around the documents are that um, the, the contract drafting stage and then the contract execution stage. We have all these other steps um, that, for example, like risk evaluation, supplier onboarding that may or may not involve documents. And I think just like 
documents are a small part of business processes often. Um, documents are also kind of a small part of checkboxes capabilities. So yes, we do do document automation and we offer a lot of CLM-like capabilities, um, including generation, now negotiation, automatic e-sign, storage and checkbox. But we also offer all of these other things as part of that as well. And so where CLMs are a point solution um, or, or document management systems focus really well on that document aspect, um, there is a lot more uh, capability that with checkbox that allows you to be process oriented. So you're thinking about that bigger picture um, and instead of having to focus on the document capability, but then use other things, go back to Word and Excel and email for the other parts of the process, you can consider automating all of that in the checkbox system. That is um, that is it for me in terms of um, in terms of the main presentation. I will have another quick look at Q and A to see if we have any other questions coming in. Um, is the template being shown um, shareable to existing customers as a training guide? I assume you mean like the app design that we just went through or perhaps the, the NDA template that we were looking at, the document template. Um, the answer to that is both of these are shareable. So um, please talk to your customer success manager if you have one or your sales rep if you're working on the prospect side of things. And we can certainly use um, these as a base to show you what that before and after journey looks like. Um, if you're an existing customer, your customer success managers will reach out as well, or feel free to reach out to them um, to guide you through perhaps how this could be applicable to your existing use cases. Awesome. Um, any other questions? Oh uh, yeah, app design. Yes, the answer is yeah. We can give you we can give you that basic app design um, to show you what that process would look like. Um, awesome. Is this an add-on module is, is a question that I can see in the chat. Um, the answer is yes, it is an add-on module and um, you can talk to your customer success rep or your sales rep um, to find out more about that particular, um, like the, the pricing and the, the particular arrangements around that module. Okay, awesome. Can the tool handle changes to PDFs as, as well as Word? Um, at this stage, it's um, designed primarily to, to ingest docx files. So um, if you have a PDF, what we recommend doing is just doing a quick conversion um, and then chucking it into checkbox. And then of course, using that editor, any minor formats and adjustments can, can be made. Um, PDF is certainly something we're looking to support um, longer term. It just has a little bit more complexity around the, um, around the, the changes of of course, because PDFs kind of render like images. But yes, that is something we're looking to support long term. And of course, on the other side of the picture, you can, of course, download these agreements as PDFs um, in and, and take them offline if you need to. And um, that's all available for you as well. I'll go back to the red lining view very quickly in case that brings about any additional questions. Just so we can see that. Oh boy, let's go through this quickly. Cool, and then through to the red line, awesome. Cool. Um, we've got an interesting question um, here. Would it be possible to create a, de a departure table from the amendments? If so, can you extract the variables from the redlining amendments to use in things like risk weighting? Um, so that is a bit of a bespoke use case. I'd have to know a little bit more about exactly how that's going to work. But at a high level, we definitely have seen cases where clients have um, have created departure tables on checkbox and kind of used that almost with like 
with coupling the database type system have used almost like a clause bank type setup where essentially you can pull in the relevant um, clauses, perhaps with degrees of severity or something similar associated with them as well and, and use that as part of negotiations as well. So um, speak to speak to your team as well about the, the specific use case and um, checkbox will be there to guide you through that. But at a high level, yes, it definitely seems possible. All right, I think with that, let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. Uh, we've got a question from Alan. How would I get my information from the um, from my form into the document? Um, Checkbox has uh, what we call a rich doc format, where basically you take a Word document and you indicate in that document where we want the variables to pull in. So um, what that would look like essentially is if I wanted to, um, so just using the editor as an example, you'd obviously do this behind the scenes on the author side, but if I wanted to put whatever my counterparty entered as their name here, I could use curly brackets, two curly brackets, which is checkboxes form, and then the variable name. So let's say we've got counterparty name, and then close my curly brackets. And then when the document is being generated in checkbox, checkbox will look at this and say, okay, I need to match that field to this particular spot. Um, and then it would display in this case, drop down PTY LTD or whatever was entered the first time around. Um, and we can use that same kind of logic to show and hide particular clauses and, and all of that. So that's fully flexible from an author perspective. Um, and yes, uh, our certifications programs go into more detail on, on how to make that happen as well. Okay, um, thank you everyone for being so engaged with the webinar. I really appreciate it. I'm going to do one last poll um, for the audience, and that is to understand whether or not you'd like to continue this conversation. Um, so if you select yes, um, one of our sales reps or our customer success reps, um, if you're an existing client, will just reach out and, and continue um, the, the conversation around how this might work, what this might look like at your organization. Um, so if we could please get your feedback on the process, that would be awesome. But thank you so much for your attention over this, this 45 minutes. Hopefully um, there are some good vibes for the rest of the week and um, thank you for your presence. See you everyone. <laughs>